today I'm going to show you the grave of Lord Snowton, the first Earl of Snowton, Anthony Charles Armstrong Jones. He's portrayed in the Netflix series The Crown in season two and also in season three. He was married to the late Queen Elizabeth's sister, Princess Margaret, from 1960 until 1978. You've got the town of Caernarvon down there. In Welsh tradition, it's the birthplace of Magnus Maximus, who was the Roman Emperor of the Western Roman Empire from 383 AD to 388 AD. Carnarvon actually appears in the crown. Carnarvon Castle was the scene of the controversial investiture of, of the then Prince Charles as Prince of Wales. The events are reenacted in season three of The Crown, with filming being done in the exact spots where the original event took place. Oh, that little castle up there is not a proper medieval castle. It's just, it's just something that was built in the Victorian era. Anthony Charles Robert Armstrong Jones, known to his friends and family as Tony, the son of a Welsh barrister and an English mother, he was the first non-aristocrat to marry into the British royal family in 400 years. He met Princess Margaret in 1958, but he was already known to the Queen and Prince Philip, having photographed them in the grounds of Buckingham Palace. When he married Princess Margaret in February 1960 at Westminster Abbey, it was the first royal wedding to be televised. He continued to be a favoured photographer for the royal family, even after a messy divorce from Princess Margaret. After their divorce in 1978, he married his second wife, Lucy Lindsay Hogg, in the same year. OK, I'm about two miles away from Carnarvon now. And this area is called the Vorrid. And Lord Snowden was buried in a church that's just behind me here. I'll show you in a second. It's a little bit unusual because it's um, an isolated church with no road access. So you have to walk across the field to get to it. And it's appropriate that he's buried here because he used to love walking along this road here. Okay, here's the church, Llan Vaclan Church. Now, Obviously he was famous because he was married to Princess Margaret but he's also just as famous for being a filmmaker and photographer. He made his first documentary in 1968 for US television on, on the subject of ageing. It was called Don't Count the Candles and he won two Emmys. But he's better known as a photographer, I think, than a filmmaker. Uh, some of his portraits include Laurence Olivier, David Bowie, Elizabeth Taylor, Jean Kelly, Princess Diana, J.R.R. Tolkien, and many more. Okay, I'm not entirely sure which way you go in. I think it's probably this way. Have a look. He also worked with the rock band Queen. A group portrait he took of the band was used in the cover of the Greatest Hits album. And the portrait of Freddie Mercury was used on the cover of Mercury's The Solo Collection that, were, that was released in 2000. Seventeen twenty two. This is locked. Then. Yeah. It's actually the first time I've been here. The church dates back to well the current building dates back to the 13th century, or parts of it anyway. It was a pre-Christian site as well. Oh, 
かな。I think I'm too early. Damn. Uh, but I'll find some photos of what it looks like inside and I'll show you those. Got like an information bar here, but there's nothing on it at the moment. See the mountains of Ruri in the background there. in place. Now before Snowdon was buried here there was uh, another famous grave here, well locally anyway, um, people say that a pirate had been buried here. So I'm just going to try and find that grave now. Well, the grave of the pirate is quite close to the church itself, I believe. And once you see the grave, you'll know why people think there was a pirate buried here. Just hope I can find it. Ah, I think it's this. Okay, that was going to be quite hard to make out, but... <clears throat> see the hat there? Let's go. Looks like it's got a pirate hat and there's uh, crossbones and there's crossbones here I've tried to find out what the story is with this grave but I um, can't find anything at all so it's always going to be known as the pirate's grave Now when you see these types of graves, when they're, sometimes they've been split open, like this one here, don't worry, you're not going to see a coffin, uh, because the coffin's actually buried in the ground, and the, uh, the slate um, gravestone is on the, just on the top there. Well explained there, Jones. Not. Snowden was born on the 7th of March 1930 and he died peacefully at his home in Kensington, London on the 13th of January 2017 and he was 86 years old. Throughout his life he supported a number of disabled charities and he even had the patent for a type of electric wheelchair in 1971. Okay, I've located the grave, so we'll make our way there now. On the day of his funeral, there was only a small gathering of mourners, just friends and family. And of course they had to come across the field, and they brought the coffin in the back of the Land Rover. And as they were coming across the field, the bell of the church, the single bell, was ringing. And here it is, Anthony Charles Robert Armstrong Jones, born 7th of March 1930, died January 13th, 2017. It's got, um, I take it this is the coat of arms of the Snowden family and his uh, signature there in red. It's a slate head, oh I think it's a slate headstone. I believe this is the grave of his father here. And that's how I always do, we'll just go behind the headstone here, see what it looks like from behind.
Okay, just a quick update on the channel. I've got thanks to everybody who's left comments on the videos I made in Switzerland. There's one more coming up. Probably the next video after this one. I'm going to try and make it back to Switzerland at some point because there's uh, lots more videos I want to do there. But I'll probably be going to another country before then. Okay, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.